Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be on Blue Bastic Demon. Bottom left hand corner, we have Agistol, who just took down a game, so it is two to one. He needs to win or be eliminated. Bottom right hand corner, we have Hoff as the green Protoss. This is on Blue Bastic Demon, which is kind of that. Uh, I think it's the one that's kind of Katrina esque, if I recall. Um, Hoff getting very greedy. Kind of a comment from chat on Twitch. By the way, this is still live commentated on Twitch. But yeah, the super greedy. I think he was just hoping that Agistol would be distracted by the probe and go after the probe. But here's the thing. He was in the base. He saw the, the spawning pool. He saw the Zerglings being produced. Usually you opt for cannon first in that scenario. If it's a four-player map and your opponent has not yet scouted you, sometimes you can get away with Nexus first. But getting very, very greedy and opting for Nexus first. Otherwise, probe. Are we going to see that same action again? I think this, this is a three-player map, so scouting... Counterclockwise. Pylon on the line. The Overlord is headed straight to Hoff's base. And we do see a spawning pool on 9 again. And are we going to see the drone extractor trick once again? A little bit early on that. Because he didn't need to start building that until he already had the supply. I feel like both players are playing somewhat nervous uh, here right there. Because you don't need to start building that until this stage when you actually... Uh, need that supply cap and actually might be a little bit in danger here. So now getting that additional We'll see if he in fact cancels it or if he in fact is going for an extractor on this timing Yeah, I, I take it back. He's actually going for an extractor on this timing um, So getting an extractor up a little bit earlier What was that on seven to get very early zergling speed? I assume and go for very quick Zergling pressure or it's possible. He's also going for a one base or two base Tech play overlord being produced. It's hard to tell Forge is up. We do have three larvae, and all three are producing Zerglings. Hoff is going to wander in the base. This time, he should know to build that cannon. Does put the cannon first this time. So learning. Zerglings pulled off gas. I think this is going to be maybe a Zergling all-in from Agistol, because he's getting that. He's continuing to produce Zerglings, first of all, and secondarily, he's pulled the rest of the drones off gas. And he's getting that Zergling speed. See if Hoff sees it coming. He has produced a second cannon. Now the Zerglings are on their way. He still might want to pull some probes, honestly, to plug this gap. And instead he's opting to go ahead and drop that Nexus. Because you still want to keep those Zerglings off the cannon lines. Because they can take them down fairly rapidly. Probe taking a little bit of free damage there. And oh, gets killed. So no more scouting. And is this... Yeah, this is more Zerglings. So Zergling... Okay, he does have the probes. Has placed that gateway, and I think this might be a win for Hoff now. We'll see. Because he's very safe here. He just needs to keep these drones on that base. That's a lot of Zerglings produced early that, yeah, I give map control, but don't do a lot else. Natural expansion's now going up. And this is definitely looking more 2008-ish. A simulator plopping down. Because, yeah, the Zerglings just have to sit and wait. And that's a lot of Zerglings that aren't drones. Plus, he has Zergling speed. Did he cancel Zergling speed? That's actually a good question. Hearing that from chat. Opting to layer now? I think he might have canceled, because these do not look like speedy Zerglings to me. Yeah, so I think he ended up canceling, putting more drones in gas. He's got the layer about halfway finished. So I think this might be two hatch Muta at this stage. Which is... Which can be very strong, particularly when these cannons end up on that forward ring like this. And you force two cannons to start because it slows down a couple of other things. Natural is up. And here's the other thing is, is with the Zerglings and a degree of map control, which we'll see if the scout can sneak back out. And I take it back. Third hatchery is being planted. Here's layer finishing. It's possible we'll still see three hatch muta. I don't think we're going to see three hatch lurker at this stage. We'll have to see, though. But this is, you can see, where if there was a two-hatch muta and being built right here, getting the cannons back to defend the probe line can be difficult. Uh, and especially when you have lack of scouting information, which Stargate just being produced does happen. Yeah, there's the Spire. So we're seeing three-hatch Spire. So back to 2007-style tactics. Zealot wandering out, going to get that free, try to get that free Zergling kill before wandering back. And I think Hoff is just going to, yeah, have to 
play it quiet. He should be able, so off three hatch muta, you can get that Corsair wander out and usually <clears throat> get eyes in your opponent's base, depending on the timing of everything, before you need to plop those cannons down. But what you do need is, is you need a pylon in place at your natural to be able to build those cannons off of, and I do not see that yet. Hatchery, third hatchery at that natural expansion. Zealot making his way forward. So the probe sees it. Did he cancel that? Where's the Corsair? Did he cancel the Corsair? Did I miss the Corsair? I don't see the Corsair. Now we see that pylon in that natural expansion, providing some defense. Citadel of Dune. Oh, he canceled the Corsair. That's going to be actually, oof. Again, might be, okay, now he's building that Stargate, but because he built that Citadel of a Dune first, that's going to be even less time he's going to have to be able to react. And if Agistel stayed on top of everything, he should have a lot of Mutalisks producing here. So there's the five Mutalisks. Corsair is basically going to be there just as the Mutalisks are warping out. There is a pylon at both locations to provide some defense. So we'll see how this goes. Probe at that natural expansion. Zealot is wailing here, so it's going to be able to see these Mutalisks pop up and fly. That might be the oh crap moment. So now Hoff needs to have, and he did not save the minerals to plop down cannons. So Corsair wandering into the base, it needs to get back on the defense now. Second Corsair being produced. These Mutalisks are honestly going to be on top of this gateway. Before, First of all, before that cannon's produced. Second of all, just as that Corsair is popping out, and that is not a good scenario. Agistel can win this game just by producing Mutalisks at this stage. Yeah, diving on top of there. Might even be able to take that Stargate out. Hop losing everything at his main. He's probably going to end up losing this Stargate and Citadel of a Dune as well. Yeah, and this is just, yeah, build order loss. And I think this is just not being accustomed to this style of play. A couple Zerglings being produced as well to clear that out. There will be three Corsairs out. But again, all Agistel has to do is keep producing units. And he still should be okay. Spreading it out. Still going after that pylon. Okay, now regathering. Having a little bit of trouble with Ring. Those Corsairs having to back off. Trying to get that cannon down. All he has to do is... Oh, actually, sorry. There's another pylon in the background. Still trying to drive them back. Yeah, just this is a huge amount of economic damage. Zealot was able to get in the natural and do a little bit of disruption there. But still, I do not think it's going to be enough. Edge still wandering out, or sorry, Hoff wandering out with more Zealots to try to get something accomplished. Second Stargate being produced at his natural. Going to try to fight it off from there. Corsair is able to finally re-engage with some health and get that thing with that spread damage over time. Able to get a little bit done. Some Scourge now moving in. <clears throat> Going to push that back. And Edge still regathering with a bunch of Zerglings. Some Zealots going to get wiped out here at the main. And Actually surprised he's not just straight producing Mutalisks. More Mutalisks being produced, it looks like. The rest of those Corsairs being wiped out. A couple Zerglings getting a little bit too uppity and dying there. So yeah, I'm going to give this game to Agistel hands down. This is unpowered, that's unpowered. More Mutalisks are moving in. Yeah, he might be able to produce a Corsair right here. He's at 27 probes, yes, but way, way behind, and this is a large army from Agistel to just clear this out. And this is enough Zerglings where they should be able to pound that front and be able to finish anything else. Yeah, I'm going to work on that pylon otherwise. I think this is the the Overlord grouping. <clears throat> anyway. So now this is when I can stop and say, yeah, the game's definitely going to Agistel. So it'll be... Game 5 will be the elimination match. Waiting for the Zergling tech. The drone going to go up and be a hero drone before splattering. I think I want to quote Sony. Okay, Nooks. By the way, check out his stream. Which is, you know... Shovel League, it's fun. Sometimes I'm off in the commentary, but you come here for the voice, right? The voice. Stay for the personality. And then fall in love with the game. I'm going to quote him straight up on that. Quote him straight up. Still five Mutalists wandering out. There is a DT... And no overlords on the front. That's a lot of zerglings for DT fodder. So Hoff making something out of this. Mules continuing to wander in, getting poked a little bit. They keep kind of spending time going back and forth to keep that down. Might be a lot of DT kills here. Well, we'll see. Zerglings are there. Does he see it? Agisol does not see it. So that's going to be at least the drones killed and wiped out right there. Mules still kind of having trouble with themselves. 
wandering back and forth. Might end, might end up losing this hatchery. So I gotta say, Hoff making a game of it at the very least. He is not... He's not perishing easily. Four mulesks re-engaging and continuing to just, yeah, waiting to take that nexus down. There is a probe that might be able to sneak a nexus up there? I don't know. Hatchery survives oof, one blade swipe away. And I gotta say, Hoff is doing a fantastic job of like the diehard thing, just refusing to perish. More Corsairs being produced. There are Scourge there to take care of it. Some more Hydalisks finally moving out. That, that DT wants that hatchery. This will be the Boral victory if he can take that hatchery. You know how sometimes you do that in the match? It looks like uh, no Overlord once again to engage. Sim City here, but no... <laughs> I just thought might end up in, all in, but I still think feel like he has enough units because this DT's wandered in the natural expansion somehow. Okay, finally. Okay, it looks like they are able to group gather. Eight kills for that DT. Hero DT. Moral victory. Stinky and Nexus in that upper right-hand corner. But this should be the game-ending swarm for Agistol. We'll see. Ooh, and a Psy Storm. Where did he get Psy Storm? That's pretty impressive for one base. Now the Zergling's flooding through. Hot keyed up. Going for engagement. Yeah, there's just too much. It's a lot of cannons, though. Just needs to get some breach. Yeah, Hoff gg right there. Gotta give it to Hoff, though. He made it interesting towards the end there, yeah? Anyway, game five is going to be the elimination match. Good job on Agistol holding, pushing through. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.